delivery did not come. The food came from a tower. And the food came back from the tower. Delivery did not come. Number 46, Brian Kapaka. Number 47, CC Campbell. Number 48, Karen Burke. Number 68, Eli Kanofsky. Number 88, Stephen Joseph. Number 99, Billy Robinson. The head coach of the Tigers is Mike Corliss. He is the assistant coach of Joe Rokovic, Logan Buckley, and Chris Hayes. Starting for your Southwestern University Pirates. Number four, Dave McDonald. Number five, Gabe Morgan. Number 14, Jackson Strouser. Number 16, Chris Steffen. Number 18, Logan LeBlanc. Number 24, Matt Mayo Caldwell. Number 28, Tyson Kwan. Number 31, Trey Pena. Number 35, Will Long. Number 38, Caleb Sound. The head coach of the Pirates is Bill Glover, and he is assisted by Mike Morgan. All right, fans, welcome on in, and it's great to be with all of y'all here on southwesternpirates.com as we are here at Senior Day. And it's a color clash game as both teams wearing gold and black, but it will be your Pirates dressed in the all-white, going from right to left to start off this first period of play. I'm Smash Simmons, glad to be with you here for the final game of the season, and as we mentioned just moments ago, Senior Day as well. As the Pirates seeing if they can cap off their season well, with what would be a monumental victory in the program's history as you take on Colorado College. And not starting off on the right foot there as it will be a turnover. And it will be the Tigers' possession. Colorado College able to just split right up the middle that's Jeffers one of the seniors for the opposition from Houston over here to Nick Johnson on the outside looking to find some room but is shut down on the outside by stout defense here holding up for the Pirates oh but slicing through the middle here behind the cage and that pass almost gets away from them but Dylan Brown able to reel it right back in here in this first period looking for our first score as this possession being held on to here by the Tigers but their first shot is saved well done by Will Walsh the sophomore from San Antonio able to make the first stop on goal here this afternoon Plenty of room to carry it here on the near side alley for the Pirates midfield. As those changes being made and now the defense getting set for Colorado College as the Pirates are looking to attack. 50 seconds on the clock here to shoot. Working outside the box right now here up to the near side. Looking to drive, the shot bouncing in. And it will be Matthew Swandall. As the sophomore attacker from San Antonio 
puts the Pirates on top here. Early on, with 12.47 remaining in the first period, it is the Pirates who take the early advantage. One to nothing. Here from the varsity field on the campus of Southwestern University, a very busy day as we have tennis and softball also going on at this same moment. The faceoff. Ultimately won by the Tigers, picked up on the ground ball just outside of the crease as the Tigers set up, looking to get into their offensive attack. Good defense, though, on the stick check. And it will be one off of the volley here from Dyson Kwan. Again, that near side alley working out well for the Pirates as they look to advance on goal. And now... Making that subtle change here as Matthew Houts checks into the midfield. Alongside Joey Prim looking to attack. The chop steps able to get past the first defender and now right at the X. Looking to dive on in the shot off target. But it looks like it was deflected. But the Pirates nearest to the ball out of play. And it will be Prim who restarts here with 45 on the shot clock. Houts. Oh, another close shot. But the Pirates again will retain possession. This is working out well for the Pirates as they, right now, their best defense is this high pressing offense. Prim trying to find some room. Again, one on one. Oh, outside, inside stutter. And hit from behind off of the miss, and it's recovered by the Tigers. Coming the other way, this is Jeffers once again, who is blazing through the midfield. Here on the outside. One-on-one -on -one as Johnson trying to find some space. Good defense by the Pirates' Caleb Sau. Off of the spin. Power rattles the cage. It will end up netting the first goal for the Tigers. It was Thomas Power who will get the scoring started off as it is now 1-1. And we are tied at one apiece with 11 minutes to play here in the opening period. Final game of the season for the Pirates. The Tigers will continue on throughout the month. Oh, the, the long stick defender deciding to take the shot from just outside the doorstep as it was legit who just missed. And I say defender, that long stick midi rather. Here to the near side, Brown denied at the X. And back to the far side of the field. This is Power, who has just scored, looking to go one-on-one -on -one again. Power cradling his way completely through the defense and beats the goalie on the upper 90, making it 2-1 as the Tigers take their first lead of this match. You get ready for the face-off with the Tigers in front now. 10-24 remains here in the first period. Ground ball picked up by the Pirates. As it was straight, Benya, and it's turned over in the midfield. Here in the attacking box, the fake shot. Just buying time right now, it's Hudson. As those changes are made, Carneal alongside Beecher who has just checked in. Carneal to Beecher. And the Pirates look a little out of sorts defensively and now have been able to settle back in. Everybody flanked right now, 40 seconds on the shot clock as the Tigers will try to devise another offensive attack. Oh, Turf Monster taking a bite out of the attacking player in Will Hansen.
but it will be picked up by his teammate, Noah Beecher. You know, shout out to uh, Washed Up Lax Bros. They put us on last year when the Turf Monster showed up here at Varsity Field. Maybe they'll put us on again this year. This time for something good. Last year it was against us. Oh, another ground ball picked up by the visitors as Hansen retrieves the possession, but they run out of time. And the Pirate defense holding on strong with a little help of the Turf Monster to get back the possession. Yeah, my year was completely made last season with the uh, shout out from Washed Up, <laughs> washed up Lex Bros. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Kate McDonald. Alex Hudgens directing traffic right now. Trying to set that little pick inside. Oh, everything was perfect until it got to the doorstep. And the ball was left. Yeah, unforced error there. And it will be picked up, though, right in the midfield off of the turnover for Southwestern. Swindoll. Back up top to Hudgens. Over... Again, the Pirates is taking some time here. Only down by one. This team has been in some real dog fights this year. Only four losses that have come by. They have had four losses that have come by four goals or less this season. Inside to outside, but nobody there. Everybody flanked right now by the defensive coverage. Mashang. A great pass that rattles the pole of the cage on the way out of play. Pirates, though, back with the possession. They have 60 seconds on the shot clock here. Oh, up to 68. Another shot taken, and that's a gutsy stop by the goalie. Travosky standing in and playing it right off of the hands of the stick. Trying to go with that inside outside fake. On the half spin to only be denied. Pirate defense picking up the pressure once again as they were able to force the turnover off the shot clock last time and this pass offline but picked back up by Nayardi. Over to the behind the crease, looking to drive in. Again, shut down by the closing defense of Caleb Sal. Both these teams' independents this year, but our familiar foes in the HCLC, as it's going to be won off of the stick check by Patrick Sinanovich. And now, blazing through the midfield, possibly coast to coast. Oh, the shot. Just wide by Alex Hudgens, the junior from Towson, Maryland. From the X again, rattling the outside of the post. As it was a good shot by Cade McDonald. But the Round Rock product unable to score there as it's still 2-2-1 two, two, in favor of the Tigers. Again, who are dressed in the black tops with the white shorts and white helmet. They're going from left to right. Your Pirates dressed in the all white this afternoon for their final occasion on senior day. And a great crowd on hand here at the varsity field to support the fellas. Beecher just cradling and getting past the defender, dropping it off inside. Oh, and that was a complete be. As the top has been popped off almost like in a, well, I guess I'm dating myself in a game like Rock'em Sock'em Robots, where it was just kapow. I don't know if you got, it didn't look like you got a check though up high, but that, that will be the 
There's definite flag that just came flying out, so that penalty will be assessed, and hopefully he's okay. He got up and just put his helmet right back up to the player who lost their lid, so they should be good. That was a, that might be one of those hits though that ramps up the physicality going forward in this matchup. And again, you think back to last season when both of these teams were sharing a conference and these teams were meeting for the conference title at the end of last year. Dropped off the inside, getting past the defense, but forgot the most important thing at the doorstep, which was the ball. Ground ball, though, picked up by the Tigers as they continue to be on the prowl here. The shot, no, it was a pass, and then the bouncer missing the target, but it will remain with the Tigers. 35 on the shot clock here for Colorado College. 440 remains in this first period of play. Pirates are only down 1-2, one, one our score. The defense a little slow to react, but they are able to close the door there, at least momentarily. And the ball lost and picked up off of the ground by the Pirates. Brendan Fryers. And possession lost by the Pirates here as it will be given right back to the Tigers at the midfield. And the Pirates... Out of sorts once again defensively, but it will be a self-inflicted wound there committed by the Tigers on the mistake as what had just transpired to the Pirates happening now to Colorado College. That was a stiff check here on the near side, but the swim move beat the defender, but not truly as Nick Johnson is able to cause the poke off the check. The shot, though, it is stopped by the goalie once again, Will Walsh, washing away a would-be goal. So after the stoppage and play, we'll get back to the restart. 3.44 in this first portion of the game. 2-1, Pirates behind. The Tigers here on senior day, but they have possession here. They scored on their first offensive possession of the game, able to get the shot in close, just outside of the doorstep. Matthew Swandle able to get the bounce in finish. But now Colorado College quickly responding with two goals of their own. Trying to find some room. O'Donnell laying it off. And I'm not sure if the goalie got a piece of it, but it does go behind the goal. Pirates get possession back, though. Dropping it off inside, but the alleyway quickly closes down by the defense. They're going to try again, and if the pass connected, they might have had a good shot on hand. Desperation maneuver there to keep the ball alive by Joey Prim. And again, that whistle. And it looks like the officials are going to want to confer. It's the Colorado coach that has their hands up in the air right now, having more questions than answers at the moment. That would be Coach Mike Horowitz. And of course, for your Pirates, Coach Bill Bowman. And you can hear the sideline telling Cade McDonald that they have 19 seconds to get into their offensive set and get this shot off. 2.49 remains, though, in the first period. Let's see if the Pirates can tie it up here on this possession. They'll start at the X. Looking to drive inside, but a body-on-body -body check, stopping the Pirates momentarily. Good quick passing. The shot on the turnaround resulting in a mean put down by CC Jeffers. 
It looked like it was going to be an empty clearance, but it ended up working out for the Tigers, but the Pirates get it back. Last touch by the Tigers in this case. As they were just hoping to get this ball out of play. Oh, but the Pirates turn it right back over. Stiff check as it completely lays C.C. Jeffers into the ground. Only for Jeffers to get right back up and look to get back possession. McDonald winning the ball off of the ground and cradling his way through the defense. Great pass. The shot, though, again, close but far. To O'Donnell missing. Sal, one-on-one -on -one here with the offensive Nick Johnson and making them evacuate possession. 145 remains here in the first. It's 2-1 Tigers ahead, seeing if they can add to their lead. Off of the pick, and it's a yard sale as the stick is lost. And the Pirate defense enacting the physicality there in their defensive box, but the ball picked up off of the volley, the shot, and it's saved, but the whistle blown by the official. And it looks like we get our first time out taken. So we'll take a time out. First period of play, it's been good so far as the Pirates still in striking distance as we come to the close of one, 121 remains. Tigers two, Pirates one on senior day here from Varsity Field. It will be Tigers' possession on the offense here in their offensive box. 2-1 to one the score, Tigers ahead with only a minute 15 remaining here in the first period of play. Pirates hosting their final game of the season here on Senior Day and hoping to find their first ever victory over this Tigers program in Pirate history here today. Looking for the double spin and it hits the side of the net as it's no goal, as the offense will continue to, per, to persist for the Tigers. From the X, and the cross field pass is lost. Aggressive stick check from behind, but shrugged off there by Luke Smith. The shot, as she hears, pings right off the top of the crossbar. So the shot clock no longer a factor, as there's only 22 seconds to go here in the opening period. Spinning their way inside, but losing possession. And it will be Pirates ball with 12 seconds left. If they're gonna move, they're gonna have to move quickly. This ball absolutely launched from box to box. And it will be a return of possession to the Tigers. And that will end a very exciting first period. 
the opener belonging to the Pirates and Matthew Swandle. But then Colorado College coming right back and getting two goals from Thomas Power to make it 2-1 after one. All right, my friends, welcome back. As, uh, things have subsequently changed in this game that should add to the interest here as we get ready for the second quarter of play. As we start off with fresh 15 on the faceoff, and it's won by the Pirates. As now your Pirates, once again, if you tuned in with us late, they are dressed in the all-white. They're going from left to right in this second period. As Colorado College, the Tigers are dressed in the black tops with the gold trim with the white shorts going from right to left. It is starting to rain here in Georgetown, Texas at the varsity field. Nothing too strong. We will see if it continues, but it's starting to dry as soon as it hits the concrete more so than less. But it will add to the humidity of this game and it has softened up the field a little bit. So we will see if we get a few more turf monsters than uh, originally planned for in this contest after that slight perspiration from the sky here in Georgetown. Let's see if that will help the Pirates' fortunes as they are still searching for the equalizer after scoring the opening goal of this game. At the X, a mean shove from behind. Forcing the Grant Campbell pass. 20 on the shot clock now for the Pirates. Inside, dumped off, and it will be missed. Pirates, though, closest to the Lucy, as it will belong to Campbell and the Pirates. Hudgens. Utilizing the pace, but slips up, as there was a little help from the defense from Roman Treselli. The Tigers now in their offensive attack, just outside, looking to cut in. The shot once again saved by Walsh. Will Walsh standing tough in cage so far in this game. A big reason why this game is only 2-1 to one right now. 40 seconds on the shot clock after the changes. Luke Smith drawing that double team, but the pass errored and it's out of play. And it will be the Pirates who have the ball back. Here to the near side, William Howell Jr. Dropping this ball off to Matt Caldwell. Joey Prim. Hal Jr. will leave as the substitution takes place. Matthew Houts now on. 12-20. Here in the second. Houts. Scoots by one. The shot taken but stopped. 
Eli Trovoski able to make another stop. Tigers trying to get this away from the defense as it's a monumental hit to the outside. And that is one of those types of checks that will inspire a team throughout this contest. But we saw it earlier when the player lost their lid from the Tigers in the first period and we just assumed that the physicality was going to ramp up. I thought it was going to come from the Tigers initially, but it has been the Pirates that continue to be the muscle men around here. Now need some offense to go along with that defense. The flag will fly. And I think it might be the push that netted the flag, not so much the swinging check. The ground probably didn't help matters for the Tigers in this case, as I think maybe the ground might have tripped up the Pirate attacker just a bit at the same time as that push. And what could be a good opening for the Pirates. Oh, couldn't connect inside. The ball still rolling around the ground as it continues to be loose, picked up by the Pirates. That was Swandle. Back up top, the shot, yes! Matthew Houts from long range. And we are all tied up with 11.03 left in this second period from the varsity field. It's 2-2. Got that crowd rowdy once again. They had the scouter. Oh, that's a back check. And that will result in a loss of possession for the Pirates. Tigers here with possession. Nyardi. Over to the outside. And returning it to the middle, Luke Smith. This game now tied Smith with the double deke. Getting around three defenders before dropping this ball off and the flag will fly late. Now he dived in, but there is that, that circle that was added back in 2019 that is supposed to make it harder for plays like that to ensue. So these kids didn't necessarily have that rule growing up. It's something that that was implemented like midway through their lacrosse careers more so than anything. So we're all well aware of it. Even myself as a more lax novice. And it looks like this call will go the way of the Pirates here. Hey. So he, he did land into that cone area that we were talking about where the shot cannot take place even on the dive so that will erase the would-be goal the Tigers though retain possession but this game stays at 2-2 You know, we talked about the trials and tribulations of this Pirates team, how they have done pretty well in close games, just not well enough to overcome the odds. But this is also a team that has taken on five teams this season that qualified for the NCAA Division III tournament, including this very same Tigers team that you see in front of us. The strong defense resulting in the turnover. The Pirates, Hal Jr. Gets the ball back, but is subsequently attacked. 
as a timeout will be taken as the Pirates look to retain the possession. So with 10.03 left now in this second period, things have mightily changed. After the slight sprinkle, that seemed to energize the Pirates as it's now 2-2 between Southwestern and Colorado College. Out of the timeout, 10.03 left here from the varsity field. Final game of the season for your Pirates. Senior day as well. And for those seniors trying to, like Matt Caldwell, trying to close out the Pirate career with a monumental victory. Looking to wind up and score. And the Pirates will retake the lead for the first time since the opening goal as Alex Hudgens gets the finish. So the Pirates back in front for the first time since the opening goal scored in this contest. The grounder won by Ruffinach. And the turnover still loose. And again, Ruffinach is there for the loose ball. The pass complete to the near side. Cutting back inside the shot. Save Willie Walshy. As Will Walsh takes away another one. Man. The Pirates come away with the victory here today. A lot of credit will have to be given to Will Walsh, especially with their performance so far here in the first half of play. As they have stopped numerous shots that look like they should have been goals. But just like any net-based game, when your goalie is essentially standing on their head, that raises the level of play of everyone, makes it so much more attainable to get the victory. Pirates now trying to see if they can extend their one-goal lead in their offensive attack here. Prim, near side, cutting inside as he gets past one to the X. Looking for the shot, and it goes wide. Who gets there first? Pirates do. 8.20 left. Pirates with possession as they continue to see if they can open up a two-goal lead. Going near side. And I guess that is a save. It looked like it ricocheted off the post too, but tough to say. Returning the ground ball quickly past midfield. This is where the speed comes in. The give, the go. No. That's possession lost, but they're in the cone. And it will be the Pirates' possession. The ground ball ultimately ended up with Strausser there off the volley. Pirates ahead, 3-2, to two, four, 740 left in this first half of play.
Gonna find some room here. 35 seconds on the shot clock as it continues to tick down. The Pirates, though, it opened up greatly, but it was denied on the shot by Turowski. Ground ball lost. Picked back up by the Pirates in the midst of the chaos. The shot, it just swings right by the goalie as they quickly jump out of the crease to win the possession. On the near side, this is Michael Refinach. One of the two Refinaches. And my apologies, I'm assuming that it could probably be Rothenach, but I was going with Notch because of the CH. Not too sure. Oh, a really nice finish there from Noah Beecher. As the senior from Towson, Maryland, ties up this game at three. Had a feeling that with the way that this season had gone for the Pirates, that this was going to be a close game, especially with the history that these two teams share from in the same conferences to both being independent to still facing each other. As the Pirates are on a two-year independent, I was going to say, well, non-conference affiliation. So for two lacrosse years, no conference affiliation as they will remain independent. So this season and then next season will be that second year of independent status. One-on-one, -on -one, past one defender, drops it off near the post, inside the shot, in! <laughs> and of course, it had to be Cade McDonald. McDonald was draped on both sides by defenders like he was wearing a cape and somehow able to nudge them both off and get that shot off and with the accuracy to finish right in front of the crease. The Pirates back in front now, 4-3, to three, here with 5.30 left in the first half. Moshang. Tigers looking to answer back quickly, and they have done so throughout this game. They're shot off this target, and it will be Tigers' possession as Matt Hudson will have it at the X. Fifty-five. Seconds on the shot clock now for the Tigers. Five minutes to go on the game clock, and we're tied. Max Carneal. The senior from Baltimore ties us up just past the five-minute mark of this game. So with 4.58 left, it is 4-4 here in the second period. Off of the face-off. It's won by the Pirates. A much-needed win there from the freshman from New Braunfels and Trey Pena. Four forty left in this first half. Pirates possession here, seeing if they can get back in front. Little slip from behind the crease, but the Pirates able to stay with the possession. One-on-one -on -one here is O'Donnell. 
who drops off the Houts, who scored from distance last time, winds up and misses this time, though. Again, the core strength there to take the contact and to shoot. Turned over from behind as McDonald whacked around the arms. Less than four minutes as this ball quickly advanced over to the attacking box. This shot off target. It was blocked by the defender. The dive for the possession. Pirates ball. No, Tigers ball. Never mind. That double stomp not working there to fool the defender. New Yardy. Back to the X here to the near side. Power, who's already scored twice in this game. Cradling past one. Defended and pops as the ball comes loose on the second. The Pirates, the nearest team there. They have possession. Walsh almost has that ball at least knocked loose. The pass heads up play almost, but it's heads up by the defense as the Tigers get the ball back here on the near side. The defense having to rattle. And it looks like the official sensing a little too much aggression. Has Not sure exactly what happened, folks, but there is a complete stoppage. And the Tigers will stay with the possession. The ball lost from behind the crease. Still rolling along the ground as it was picked up and then checked away. The Tigers ball again. Tough call to go against the Pirates at that juncture. 75 seconds on the shot clock. One on one, New Yardy. This shot from point blank range. And it was gutsy defending once again by Will Walsh. The goalie really helping keep the Pirates in this game. So we are tied at four. Inside. Shot blocked. 208 left here in the first half. The Pirates shadowing the offense here. One defender fell, so the rotation has to make up for it. The shot, though, saved on the bouncer from Walsh again. And you can hear that all the way from this sideline, asking for the timeout. With a minute 46, the Tigers have possession and are trying to take the lead before going into the break. The Pirates, on the other hand, seeing if they can get the ball back and maybe get in front before the end of our first half. We'll be back with more as we're tied at four between the Tigers and the Pirates.
Well, I wasn't sure if that was some sunshine peeking through, but the lights are on overhead here at Varsity Field. As it is a um, rather dingy day in Central Texas as there's been plenty of overcast since the evening of last night to throughout the morning tonight. Not a lot of rain. We did have a sprinkle in this game as that ball will sprinkle through the goalkeep as the Tigers out of the timeout get exactly what they were looking for. As Cade Oxley puts the Tigers back in front five to four. It was the Pirates who had a three two lead. That was a race quickly. The Pirates got back in front four three. That was tied up off of the face off. Both teams turning and the ball still not claimed by anyone. Now the Tigers have it off of the ground. It was Brooks who picked it up. And they'll keep this in the defense, trying to advance it through the midfield. McDonald able to knock it loose, at least initially. Less than a minute to go now. Timeout taken. So just right on the end of regulation here in the first half. 54 seconds remain. The Tigers took the lead out of the last time out. Will it be deja vu or will the Pirates find possession and a goal before the end of the half? We'll find out. Out of the timeout, the Tigers trying to add to their one goal advantage. 40 seconds left. Inside, Nayardi had the look, but misses wide. 37 seconds on the game clock, the shot clock of no factor here. 30 on. One on one inside, and the defense Two laxed right in front of the crease. As Thomas Powell has netted the hat trick in this game, now with their third goal. And that will help push the Tigers in front six to four. Off the ground ball. Southwestern with possession, but only 14 seconds. And as soon as I say that, well, they will retain possession. I thought they gave it up there. So the call does stand. Pirates possession, but they have nine seconds to get this thing off. Make it eight. From the X. Outside, inside, no. Three seconds to work with now. McDonald quickly restarts in front. The shot wide again, and that's how the half will end. <laughs> so for the second consecutive period, 
it, it will end up being Colorado College who outscored the Pirates. In this case, it was a 4-3 second period, leading to a 6-4 overall advantage going into the break. As the Pirates still in striking distance, but the visitors from Colorado College in front, 6-4. to four. So far, it has been an amazing game. Both teams playing really tough. Thomas Powell already with the hat trick. Kate Oxley, Max Carneal also scoring, as well as Noah Beecher for the Tigers. For your Pirates. It was Cade McDonald alongside Alex Hudgens and Matthew House who have netted as well as Matthew Swandall. We'll be back as the Pirates are down 6-4 here against Colorado College.
Welcome back, fans. Shout out to you uh, Tiger fans that are checking in from Colorado or no matter where you may be streaming. And of course, hello to all you Pirate fans out there tuning in for the final game of the season for your Southwestern University Pirates as they are currently down six to four as we start things off here in the third period to play from the varsity field on the campus of Southwestern University. Tonight happens to be night one of WrestleMania, but for today, this is the main event of the Pirates season. Seeing if they can finish their story for the first time and get victory over the Colorado College Tigers for the first time ever in program history. And they have had some lapses at times defensively, but so far so good as they are still within striking distance. Again, they have been in contests where they have dropped four games in games with a deficit of four goals or less. But is this the game where the Pirates can just put it all together after this season? And everything just clicks in this second half. They have been a strong first half team. It's been the second half that's been the question. So the turnover after the miss. Quickly advanced over to the far side of the pitch. As the change is taking place here at the middle of the field. Evades one, the pick helps out two. The shot, no, it's gonna be deflected by the defense. Heads up by the pirate player who was standing in the middle of the alleyway, right in front of goal. Will Walsh has been strong in net. There have been some opportunities that have just been given up where there's been some good finishes on goal that they had no real chance of changing. But Walsh is a big reason why the Pirates find themselves in a game like this where it's so close. So the defense able to read the offensive attack. Hal Jr. helping out there on that defense. Again, if you just joined us, is Southwestern who are dressed in the all white today. The shot beats two as the defender cleared out of the way. And I'm not sure if they did that on purpose or it was just by mistake as Sal took a step to the left. At the same token, they were shielding the vision of Walsh. So Walsh couldn't make a play on it and it rattles the back of the net as the Tigers for the first time in this game, we'll get the opening goal of the period and make it seven to four. It had been the Pirates who had scored first in the first half of play in the two previous quarters. Ryan Trapasso will get credit for the goal and Walsh there on the stop. So the Pirates advance this ball past the midfield into the offensive attack here. One on one from the X. The spin beats one defender inside, but the defense able to reconvene. Back to the top, McDonald. He's already had one goal in this game. 12 minutes left of the third quarter. 7-4 our score now. Tigers ahead. 30 seconds on the shot clock, looking to advance across the face of goal. Inside and on the dive, just missing on the shot was Matthew Houts. And you hear that scream of stay on sides. As this long ball launched and completed. And now the Tigers attacking. From just inside, the bounce shot complete, upper 90. 
as it took a wonderful bounce for Braden Leggett. We had just mentioned it that the Pirates a strong first half team this season, but this second half not starting off according to plan. Maybe according to plan for the Tigers as they net two within the opening five minutes of this second half and now lead eight to four as they win the faceoff. Won the faceoff, gets the glory as well. Trapasso, second goal of this match, and it's now nine to four as the Pirates will take a much needed timeout here as the lead starting to open up a little too much for the Tigers as they are on the cusp of breaking into the double digits. It's nine to four after two goals scored in the second half here at the Varsity Field Tigers ahead on southwesternpirates.com. Pirates trying to get back on track after a pretty good first half of play. I want to thank you again for tuning in with us here for the final time of the lacrosse season from the varsity field. I'm Smash Simmons, glad to be with you for the first time this season. It's been a while, but a lot has transpired this year in the first season in the independence. As the Pirates will compete independently next season as well. Looking for that shot. McDonald tracking back. It's saved by Travalski. Looks like the pirate foot was in that cone on the shot. So the turnover on the possession off of the error on the shot. It will be Tigers possession. That swipe check way off the mark as Ruffinock able to advance it quickly. It will be a penalty once the Pirates get possession of the ball. 60 seconds though as the Tigers try to work with the advantage. 10-15 left in the third period of play as it is a great crowd on hand, just a little bit of a sprinkle in the second quarter, but that is given away. And that was a, another vicious check as the player was on the ground. It may be more vicious than it intended to be as the player had dropped to ground on their knees, shortening their height and putting their face right in the middle of the check that was coming their way, resulting in a helmet contact with the stick. You know, sometimes your body is just in the wrong place at the wrong time. So two flags on that play. And that will result in a two-man advantage for the Tigers here. So it was the technical offsides and a full body check that results in the two penalties for Southwestern as they are definitely shorthanded right now trying to defend the crease. 
as they are down 9-4. The defense scrambling. They get a gift as it pings off of the net. But the follow-up is there as Matt Hudson. Now he picked that up himself off of the volley and then made sure to just laser it in from close distance to put the Tigers ahead 10 to four. Off of the face-off, possession won by the Tigers. It bounced off the post. And the Tigers lose possession. Southwestern with it here. Good pass to flick it from the underhand by Gabe Morgan. Ooh, crunching. Check in the midfield. And not a good moment here for the player that's down for Southwestern as their foot was caught in between the leg and the turf right when contact was made. And you can see instantaneously going to that foot and ankle. And that was a, a pass that put Quan in a difficult position to try to make a play as the freshman paying the price for that pass as they were absolutely crunched. And again, their foot kind of getting stuck in the ground and making contact with the defender at that same time. Hopefully it just looked worse than it actually it is. But we will take a timeout as Quan getting assessed here from the training staff. It's Tigers 10, Pirates 4 here on southwesternpirates.com with 9.25 remaining in the third quarter. So shout out to the training staff for helping out Dyson Kwan there as they were able to get him back up on his feet, but having to be helped off of the field. So hopefully Kwan, again, what looked to be a not a pleasant situation to be in after that check and then being rolled upon on that ankle. Right on the doorstep. It will be a goal. The Pirates are trying to argue that the player was stepping inside the cone as that shot was taken, as they were being pushed towards the crease, but their, their argument not going to factor in into this situation as the Tigers will advance an additional goal and now lead 11-4. to four. Completely different game from the visitors in the second half. Looking for the hockey pass across the ground. It's going to be picked up by the Tigers at the midfield. Sal's been busy on the defensive end. And the shot clock wasn't moving. 
So even the little things starting to hinder the Pirates here in the second half as the shot clock not ticking away after the possession picked up by the Tigers. There's always going to be a soft spot for Colorado College around here at Southwestern because when the Pirates were starting their football team, and since we both wear black and gold, uh, they were kind enough to send us over some equipment to get that team, that initial team started as uh, Southwestern had resurrected football just a few years ago. So there will always be that little soft spot. But when it comes to lacrosse, <laughs> you know, the Pirates still have been unable to find victory over the Tigers in the program history. And today was looking like the day where it might just be that time, but instead the Tigers flipping the script here in the second half in what was once a close game now has been a, a built-up lead by the Tigers, and they continue to bombard the net as they score yet again. This time it's Noah Beecher for their second goal of the game, and it's now 12-4. to four. So Southwestern still looking for their first goal of the second half. Just to give you an idea how it looked like before, it was a 2-1 first half to Colorado College. It was a 4-3 second half. If the pattern had continued, this would be a 6-5 third quarter, but instead it's a 6-0 third. Well, a violation on Colorado College. So Southwestern will get possession and have a chance to avoid the faceoff, so they'll just have the ball. Now seeing if they can do their best to get their opening goal of the second half. 8-10 remains. Good balance there on the drive in from Declan O'Donnell. O'Donnell. The shot trapped inside the crease by Travoski. Stephen Ruffinock. One on one here. Ruffinock able to pass it over the outstretched arm of McDonald. The pass complete up top to Nick Johnson as it's across the field now. Over on the far side, Hudson with the pass, looking for the pick. Good defense initially from Southwestern, but the spin move, ultimately losing possession. It's loose in front of the crease. It's picked up by the Tigers. The shot saved by Walshy after a crunching tackle. The second shot, once again, saved by Walsh. I know there's 12 goals scored, but Will Walsh has been a real big reason why this game has been respectable score-wise. Just looking for some help now from the rest of his teammates. A little fake with the eyes to fool the defender. And he heard the footsteps as the defender was coming back from behind to help. The Pirates will have possession, though, on the restart. Houts near side. Pirates nowhere to go. Prim one on one. And the shot skirts across the ground only for it to be knocked into the air. The loose ball belongs to Southwestern as it was Cade McDonald hustling to keep it alive. Trying to bully their way in to Noah Vell. Houts knocked to the ground. but the Pirates will stay with the ball as this call goes against the Tigers. Taking it quickly. 
Pirates here to the near side. Back up to the top of the box. Far side in. A much needed goal. And of course, on senior day, it will be the fifth year who returned in Matt Caldwell who will net the first goal of the second half for the Pirates. In lacrosse, there is not one shot that will get you back multiple goals in one shot. So it starts one by one. And now Southwestern down 12 to five here in the third quarter. Face off one though by Southwestern by Trey Benya. When the Pirates were having a lot of success the last couple of seasons, it had been because of the initial face-off. Hal Jr. able to poke the ball loose off of the stick check. That was a nice pass from Ruffinock. The shot misses wide. And it will be Tigers' ball. But we have one player down for the Tigers. That's Stephen Ruffinock, who is slow to get up here. And they're taking off their gloves. I'm not sure what else the issue would be here, but now back up to their feet. So good to see. As he made a really nice pass to keep that play alive, but Ruffinock already trotting off toward the sideline. Yeah, because Coach wasn't necessarily ready to make that substitution, but the substitution will take place now for Ruffinock and an additional player as Cade Oxley checks in for the attack. 5.05 left in the third quarter. Pirates down 12-5. Nayardi with the pass back to the X. Looking for room inside. Possession lost and the ball trapped. As Walsh was on the scene. Hal Jr. gets past the initial check. Hal setting that screen. As the Pirates were looking to generate some offense off of the pick. Hal uh, thought about continuing with the attack before the true substitution taking place. Hudgens, they have scored as well, has a junior from Towson, Maryland. And that will be a turnover, and you could hear the crowd groan collectively as the, it was just a passing error that led to the giveaway. And no real pressure there. I will say though, there is a 20 mile per hour wind here today. It is quite windy in Central Texas. That could cause minimal issues. I didn't think it would be that much of an issue. Well, if they were shooting on the practice crease that's out of play, that would have been a goal. However, he is actually off mark. And on the restart, the Tigers still lead 12-5 and have possession here, seeing if they can add to the 12-5 lead. The Pirates had just scored moments ago, though, as it was Matt Codwell, the fifth year here on senior day for the final time as a Pirate lacrosse player getting the goal. And the Pirates are definitely going to miss Codwell as they depart the program, as they have been one of the uh, cornerstones of the success that this Pirate team has had in throughout his tenure. Codwell tied for six all-time in career points with 135 coming into the game. Six all-time in career goals coming into the game with 95. So that means uh, that they continue to move up the all-time list. And they were 10th all-time coming into today's contest in career assists with 40. And they were 10th all-time in goal scored in a single season. But, you know, you think about them, Gus Thompson, Andrew Morse, uh, both really great teammates and hard workers. Uh, they're in, you know, some real key glue guys you know, teammates, coaches have mentioned that uh, they're 
their positive attitude and you know just their banter is going to definitely be missed. Two forty-five left in this third quarter. Thirteen-five now. Tigers ahead. As they uh, have opened up the lead here in the third period, it was just 6-4 coming out of the half. And another difficult angle, but another shot as Max Carneal gets their second goal of the matchup. And our score will rise 14-5 now as Colorado College continues to put the goals on the board. Off of the face off, one by the Tigers. 220. And the ball put overhead. And another flag comes out, and it looks like we're going to have a penalty against Southwestern as the Tigers are on the advantage. Oh, doing their best Barry Sanders impression here as they just passed three. Goalie was out of crease, and that could have been a dangerous moment. Instead, the whistle will stop play as we come back to assess the penalty against Southwestern. Man advantage coming up for the Tigers. Just 30 seconds off of the offside call. Gabe Morgan will be in the bin. And the Tigers with the man up. Look to take advantage of that on this attack. Minute 40 left in the third period. 60 on the shot clock. As the shot clock. And the shot will miss. So the ball will go back to the Tigers. The shot taken, shot saved by Walsh. And a good outlet pass by Walsh to connect with William Hal Jr. Hal Jr. able to cut inside, dropping off this pass. Oh, running into a triple team, McDonald with nowhere to go as they lose possession. And the ball still bouncing around. Kernan Brooks ultimately came up with the loose ball as they were able to advance. Caleb Howell with a momentary interception. Ooh, and this pass takes a bad bounce as Brooks unable to come up with it. Turnover and it's Pirates ball. The Pirates have the possession here with 30 seconds left, seeing if they can score before the end of the period as we get ready for the fourth. Shot clock doesn't factor in here. 20 seconds left on the clock. Slight push consists of a slight trip up. At the X, Pirates are ready to go. 10 seconds. Down to seven as possession lost. It's still in play and it's picked up by Colorado College. And with one second, the almost taking out the fans that were just leaving the field of play. And that will take us to the end of the third quarter. As we get ready to head into the final frame here on Senior Day, Tigers really showing their strength here in the third quarter as they outscored the Pirates 8-1 to one at the start of the second half. That's our score, 14-5, to five as we get ready for the fourth quarter.
final frame of the final game of the season for your Pirates as right now they're trying to evade a goal and Will Walsh will snatch away another one. So Walshy, despite the score in line, has been pretty magnificent in cage. As the Pirates down 14 to five here. Again, we welcome all of you all, no matter who you're rooting for, we do welcome you in here to Georgetown, Texas on the campus of Southwestern University. The Pirates are dressed in the all-white today, going from left to right for the final time this season. Colorado College, well, they'll be on the road tomorrow as they'll be playing in Louisiana and against Centenary as they have a few more games before they finish up their independent slate this year. Unfortunately for Southwestern, though, uh, it, it seems that history does repeat itself. As The last time we saw this Colorado College team, it was on the road in the HCLC. Back in the championship. As uh, that game, pretty similar to this one, as the Pirates and the Tigers had it close in the first half, but then the Tigers ultimately ended up pulling away. Uh, keeping the Tigers 7-0 all time against the Pirates in lacrosse, or at least Ben's lacrosse. And yeah, the Tiger offense starting to expand here. And that was the whole gang check as about five guys surrounded the one player. The pass inside, and the shot scored. Jackson Strouser, the sophomore from Plano, Texas, will record the goal, but give tons of credit to Chris Steffick as the defender was able to find the right pass at the right time to generate that play. And again, you can't score multi-goals all at once off of one shot. It takes one goal at a time. But maybe the comeback starts now. 14 to six, Pirates win the faceoff. Looking inside, they rip another one as Matt Codwell, the fifth year here on senior day, scores his second. And the Pirates cut the lead in half, 14 to seven. So wherever you may be sitting, whatever you may be doing, if you're superstitious, you're going to have to continue doing it if you're a Pirates fan because after having an abysmal third quarter, they open up the fourth period of play with back-to-back -back goals within the span of 30 seconds of each other. The stick check throws the ball out of play and the Tigers will have possession. The Yancey. Here up top, the shot. And Pirates fans wanting a turnover there, but the shot, I think it was sent away by Walsh just a little bit, and yeah, the defense just letting up an easy goal there. As they cut in near side, just on the inside of the post as Power. Thomas Power had already netted the hat trick in the first half of play, now with their fourth goal of this game. Two away from the sock trick now, and it is 15 to seven. As Colorado College takes away the positives there and puts a temper on them as the Pirates had scored two goals back to back there prior, but they win the faceoff again here, and the shot almost gets past Trovoski, but the uh, gold stop, but Anthony Cadillo, the uh, junior from Houston, showing their strength at the faceoff. Yeah, 
less than 12 minutes remaining in the season for the Pirates. How memorable are they going to make it here towards the end of this game? The shot just went right off of the helmet of the defender as they were trying to violently stick check that ball out of possession. McDonald from the X, the shot ended up wide. Pirates closest to the ball, so they'll have possession. Strausser picks it up and will restart play. 42 seconds on the shot clock now for Southwestern. Working from the perimeter of the box. McDonald continued to be ridden here. And the shot up front. The comeback and the putback by Matthew Houts. The hometown product from Georgetown High School. Right place, right time. And that one bounced clear off of the post. Houts, as they say, Johnny on the spot. Good composure to get that ball off after retaining possession to score that goal and to stay out of the cone at the same time. Really made it seem much more simplistic than that play actually was. Hey, look at that. The Pirates, some good fortune going their way as they have possession. Didn't even have to take the face off there. If the Pirates can get this, get themselves into double digits, that would make this game and a possible comeback completely more plausible. It's 15 to 8 right now, 11 minutes to go. So time a bit of a factor here as the Tigers have shown that they can score quickly. The shot ripped but saved. Travoski making the save on the near side post. As the outlet pass from behind connects well past midfield. This is Michael Ruffinock who will give way to the X behind on the attack. Power, who has been the point man in this game, already scored four. Dylan Brown, here to the near side. Hudson, cradling and looking. And this was gonna be the main concern for the Pirates, is just that Colorado College, with the lead that they have, as they are up by seven, can afford to waste time off of the clock, especially when compared to other sports, the shot clock and lacrosse, quite lengthy. I thought that was gonna be the start of the attack. Instead, the game of keep away continues. Now looking to score up front. And again, the defense, as Stefik, who has proven pretty good this season, getting beat near side, and it ended up taking another Stupendous, well washed save to keep the game as is. Nice move by Joey Prim to evade the check. Not so lucky that time. And that will be a penalty against the Tigers. The Pirates try and take advantage of the situation here. And the shot misses as it goes out of play, but will come back to the penalty. Pretty clear that that was an illegal slash. McDonald getting the team into a huddle here as they want. Oh, never mind, not a slash. Okay, so 30 seconds that the Pirates will have the man advantage here. Again, the Pirates only have 30 seconds with a man advantage, so they got to make the most of the time here. Yeah, Strausser was winning the ball on the near side post. Nobody ever passed it to him. And then the defense able to deflect the shot. So an all-out play by the Pirates are able to get the ball back as he completely sent Jake Moshang head over heels as they were tripped up trying to get to that loose ball. Yeah. 
And the Tigers able to Well, the Tigers absolutely killed that penalty as the turnover also taking place. And talk about a lucky bounce. Karsten Nayardi hit it off of the ground under the crossbar and in. And just when it looked like Southwestern might have found the breakthrough the Tigers and New Yardy come right back and they score to make it 16 to eight. For New Yardy, sixth goal of the year. And with eight minutes to go, Southwestern finds themselves with their back against the wall once again here as they're looking to defend. The shot wide as Howell was trying to make something happen. Granted, both of these teams uh, in their first year of of independent play, not exactly finding the success that they were searching for like last season, but at the same token, the scheduling, I feel much more difficult as they took the really tough games this year, rode them all the way to ground as the Pirates forced the turnover. This ball loose though right in front of the crease and it's picked up by Sal. Here to the near side as they come down the near side alley, Southwestern. Dropping it off in front. This shot scored. Matt Caldwell with the Hattie. Here's a goal for the Pirates. Set by number 24, Matt Mayo Caldwell. Caldwell making a big shout out here on Senior Day, the fifth year, returning for the final time as a Pirate player. And at the same token, let's send a shout out to uh, the uh, Southwestern Pirates Lacrosse Team Mom Group. Yeah, I, look, I, I know it's not easy on the road, but it, that, that group makes it way more palatable for Southwestern on the road. Right now the Pirates have possession. We'll get back into that Team Mom Group in just a moment here. Let's see if the Pirates can take advantage of the situation. Get into the double digits here, only become down by six right now, down by seven, 16-9. Oh, we're trying to get that one-handed shot off with McDonald, but it will be Pirates ball. We were talking about that team mom group, and again, with all the changes that happened in the offseason, going independent, Little things like that, you know, it always helps to have the, the moms of the team really come together and make things uh, a lot easier than they can be. Everything from finding restaurants to eat on the road to providing breakfast tacos for the players as they're getting on the buses to travel. Everything from setting up the lunch, uh, even here for the seniors on senior day. And, you know, always those nice little goodie bags. So, again, you know, this season isn't possible without them. And with the backside scoop shot, Matthew Houts, I think we'll also be saying thank you for all the goodies from the team moms that they've been handing out this year as he is able to tally another goal and will tally the Hattie. It's now the Pirates make it 16 to 10 with 6.02 left here in the fourth quarter. So for the Tigers going forward, you would imagine it's just all about winning possession and taking time off of the clock. And now they have one possession. And instead, they're just going to try to shoot. So both teams making substitutions in and out. I'm not 
not sure how many reserve players for the Tigers will get a chance to get some run in this game as the game's still rather close at this point. But the big concern is, is the shot clock as, you know, every offensive possession is a fresh 60. And with only six minutes left, that's theoretically, if the Tigers can get six possessions, they can just dwindle down this clock. And I know the shot clock doesn't start at 60, but I mean, just theoretically speaking, if it, every possession is about 60 seconds, then you could just hold on to it, especially with a six goal lead. But with seven, that makes it much easier. Max Carneal now with the hat trick for themselves. And it's 17-10. But the Pirate Faithful still remain here for Senior Day. And that is terrific to see. Um, what has been a very busy athletic day here on campus here at Southwestern University. A softball going on at the same time, tennis going on at the same time. So there wasn't a whole lot of parking today. Pirates trying to get back another goal here, down 17-10 here in the offensive. McDonald shrugs off two would-be checks. McDonald sitting at the X. And I can only imagine what might be going through the mind of a player like Matt Codwell. Yeah, still out there battling, but each and every second is the, the final second of your collegiate career. And, and, you know, barring maybe a few pickup games or maybe a, a, an itch to try out for a, a, a pro team somewhere, this could possibly be their final game as a collegiate player. So utilizing the little bit of that Red Rover, Red Rover technique as, again, the offsides a possibility, so having to match up. A bit of a slip, but a quick turn. Good defense here from the Pirates. That's Sal who once again turned into a full-time starter. Turf Monster shows up here late it really made their presence known as that would also result in a turnover. Good evasion here on the advancement by Gabe Morgan. Morgan here to Matt Caldwell. Less than four minutes to go for the Pirates and this 2024 lacrosse season. Back at the X, one-on-one -on -one here. McDonald trying to utilize the pick. Oh, good defense, but able to swim inside. And they were inside that cone when that shot took place. As Stephen Ruffinock kind of helped him to ground. This is Michael Ruffinock who is able to advance past the attackers. The ball loose, picked up by Sal. Ooh, that's a dangerous check across the neck. Sol able to Sal able to re-pick up the ball after taking the penalty. The Pirates, as this ball just batted across the ground by Hal Jr., well played. And now the Pirates trying to take advantage of the flag that flew. And Southwestern, again, time ticking away here, 2.30. Here in the fourth quarter, down 17-10. Now they have the numbers, and the Pirates looking to attack. One-on-one -on -one as the defense gets fooled inside. The shot lost across the ground, back inside. 
pushed down to ground and will come back to pick up the penalty after the pickup from the Tigers. Thirty second penalty here against the Tigers and Michael Ruffinock. With two ten left, the Pirates trying to close out the season with some positive notes here. And there is one of them. The feed from the X to Cave McDonald, who will net their second goal. And it's now 17-11. As the Pirates down. And this is good to see here on Senior Day as Gus Thompson enters the game for Southwestern, the senior from Houston, Texas. As well as as well as Andrew Morse, the midfielder and senior from Los Angeles, California. Both in the game for the final time in their Pirates career. As they will get a chance to soak it in here as we'll Take a timeout with one minute and 51 seconds. It seems that it's all but a formality as Colorado College leads 17-11. A minute 51 left in the Pirates lacrosse season as Colorado College leads 17-11. For the final time, I'm Smash Simmons. Thank you again for tuning in with us here from the varsity field. As the athletic seasons are almost set to wrap up here for Southwestern as we get ready for summertime, only to get ready to get back to the fall and get started all over again. This ball out of play. And it will be a turnover, Pirates ball. And Andrew Morse. Well, was out there now making the change. That's a lot of the Pirate reserves getting a bit of a run here. Emery Osgood was in and now back out. A definite penalty here against the Tigers. Declan O'Donnell, a minute 10 left. I'll see if Pirates can put one more on the board before the end of the season. Oh, start and stop, nice move. And the shot whipped in from outside, but it's saved. And 53 seconds remain in this game. But we come back to the penalty as the Tigers will be down a man. Black one, cross one 
So that's going to be the end of the game for Nick Bell as they will have to sit the final minute of play. And with only 53 seconds, there will be no chance to re-enter unless a goal is scored. Who has the magic touch here for Southwestern one more time this season? Inside, knocked away. Tigers able to scoop it up on the free. Ben Craney, two spin moves, able to evade would-be checkers. And connects with the pass up top to Will Hansen. And with 20 seconds left to go in this game, the Tigers, I'm not sure if they're calling everybody off or they're looking to score that one last time here with 10 seconds left. But they're just pacing back and forth at the X. And everybody called off, so it's just going to be thrown into the air. And that is how the season will end. At the end of the day, it's not so much about the W's and the L's, but the lessons learned and the friendships made throughout the seniors' tenure here at Southwestern. But because we do keep track of W's and L's, the final score, though, 17-11. L uh, 11, As the Tigers will take the victory here against your Pirates at the varsity pitch. But again, a big shout-out to the Team Mom group for everything they've done and provided along the way here for the fellas this season. Everything from those breakfast tacos to getting them those little grab bags and goodies on the road to help setting up lunch here for the seniors and for finding restaurants on the road and every every bit of support, you know. It goes all the way from when they're little kids all the way until they're uh, soon to be uh, young, independent adults on their own. And uh, to all you fans, I know it was just the first time I got to speak uh, with some of you all this year, but for some of the ones that followed along for all the coverage last year, it was uh, great to be back. Uh, I wish it could have ended on a more positive note, but uh, again, lots of great memories and a lot of great moments, not just from this season, but throughout their ten years here have been uh, added up and a lot of memories made. So it's always a little hard uh, and a little sad to have to say goodbye to our seniors. But, of course, we wish them all the best in everything that they try to set out to achieve. And we hope uh, to see them back, you know, here live to take in a game. Or, and, of course, all of you, I understand what happens when uh, the person that you're following graduates. Sometimes uh, that's the end of you following the team. But I implore you, you know, maybe when you have a night free and, there's a game on, or you just have nothing else going on on a Saturday afternoon uh, next season, and you want to reminisce that maybe you tune in with us here on southwesternpirates.com and take a look at your old team. But for everyone here on campus at Southwestern University and everybody here in the athletic department, of course, a big shout-out to our training staff. It was uh, medical training, trainer staff week uh, month last month in March. But, I mean, every day they're so important. And, again, a big shout-out to all of you who have tuned in with us. Uh, regardless if this was just your only game that you watched this season or you've been watching for, like, the last four years, uh, it wouldn't mean as much without you. So for everyone involved, saying thank you once again. I'm Smash Simmons. Goodbye. And I spoke a little too soon. <laughs> We're going to have our senior day presentation for you coming up. But I will depart uh, as I give way to the sights and sounds of uh, what is happening here at Varsity Field. So, again, a big thanks from everyone here at Southwestern University. Big thanks to you tuning in. And uh, I hope to see you again next season right here at the Varsity Field. I'm Smash Simmons saying goodbye for now. Have a great rest of your weekend. And we'll see you next season.
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to recognize the men's lacrosse senior class of 2024. Our first senior, number 24, Matt Mayo Caldwell, Atlanta, Texas. Southwestern lacrosse was awarded to have Matt for one more season in 2024. As it stands before today's game, Matt Caldwell is tied for sixth all-time in career points with 135. Sixth all-time in career goals with 95, tenth all-time in career assists with 40, and tenth all-time goals scored in a single season. Matt is a communications major and business minor. Upon graduation, he plans to work in hotel hospitality management. Our next senior, number 77, Andrew Moore from Los Angeles, California. Andrew came in as a day one as one of the hardest workers on the field. Moore has been a greater teammate than Andrew. He always gets the team going, leads with energy, and has represented our program and athletic department with enthusiasm and excitement every single day. Andrew is a business major and architecture minor. Upon graduation, he will be working for New Western Railroad as a disposition agent. Please give a round of applause for Andrew Moore. Our last senior. Gus Thompson, Houston, Texas. Gus is one of the most loved members of the team because of his dedication and ability to bring the team together. Gus has been a model teammate, always brings a smile to the team and his coaches, and has represented Southwestern lacrosse with the utmost respect. As a defender, Gus has gone over 50% of the faceoffs in his career. Gus plans to graduate with his major in psychology and a minor in business. Please give a round of applause for Gus Thompson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give one more round of applause for the men's lacrosse senior class of 2024.
Oh, yeah, you're good.